New estimates for the United States through to October 1st are up to uh, nearly 200,000 deaths. That increase of uh, more than 30,000 deaths since last week is due to increases in six states uh, that we're seeing particularly in the forecasts. Those six states uh, in order of importance are Florida, California, Georgia, and then we see Arizona, Alabama, and Texas. In all of those states, if you look at the data, that's what's driving this increase. We've seen uh, sustained increases in cases and hospitalizations uh, and deaths now in Arizona. We are seeing uh, increases in Florida of a similar nature. In California, cases have been going up for quite some time, but now we're starting to see deaths stop declining and actually start to increase. And the same story, we're seeing uh, increases finally in deaths just, uh, after m several weeks of increasing cases in Texas. So basically, we're finding that the, uh, these epidemics are, have turned in those settings, and we're getting from the three sources, cases, hospitalizations, and deaths, pretty clear evidence of a rise. That translates into a longer protracted period of transmission in each of those states and some other states as well. And that means going into September when we expect due to seasonality transmission to go back up, we expect more transmission if children go back to school, that having more infections remaining in the community in those states is also going to sort of have an accelerated effect on increased transmission uh, as things may turn uh, less favorably because of seasonality to being, uh, you know, um, increased potential for transmission. All in all, uh, rising estimates for the United States, uh, and I think it calls for concerted action, including uh, much more uh, positive efforts by individuals to wear masks whenever they're outside their home, to avoid uh, physical contact, and will also perhaps require some state governments to consider reimposing mandates if we go into more exponential growth of transmission in those settings. In the last week, IHME has moved from its second generation uh, model, which is a combination statistical model and transmission dynamics model, to a further third generation refinement where the statistical algorithm used to process case notifications, hospitalization data, and death data into a coherent time trend has been improved. And then we are also have on the transmission dynamics component of the model, added further covariates to the model, including things like air pollution, uh, smoking rates, uh, altitude, uh, as well as paying much more attention to the details available in the Facebook survey, which provide us information about contact rates and mask use in much more detail around the world. And those uh, refinements have led us to change our modeling strategy, uh, and we see this as an important improvement as we move forward and think both about what's likely to occur as well as some of the alternative uh, trajectories that could occur if different policy strategies are implemented. We are very concerned about the trajectory around the epidemic in uh, Southern Latin America, particularly Brazil, but also Argentina and Chile, where we're seeing in many parts of Brazil and in Argentina and Chile, rapid increases despite having in place uh, considerable social distancing mandates, despite having quite high mask use rates. And so this breakthrough, if you will, of transmission in the setting of considerable efforts to decrease transmission is extremely concerning. Uh, it's happening in the context of the uh, winter season in the Southern Hemisphere. And we also are seeing increasingly strong evidence of seasonality. 
that would suggest that transmission will be intensified in those settings, and that may be part of the reason we see this sort of breakthrough transmission. But it does point out that uh, it will be very challenging to contain transmission in those settings and will require a concerted effort by individuals and by government to try to find ways to break the transmission cycle and avoid uh, the hospital systems being overwhelmed and avoid unnecessary deaths. So we will be monitoring what happens in those countries very closely and be trying to see if the modeling that we produce can be useful in some way to articulate different uh, control strategies that might be used in those settings.